Hi, everybody. This is Patrick Dietrich. I'm the CTO here with Connect Tech, and I'm joined today by Ryan Collis, the CEO of USIS Integrated Solutions. And today we're going to be focusing on deep learning at the edge, maximizing your capabilities while minimizing your investment. And specifically, we're going to spend a lot of time with the Jetson and how we can sort of reimagine the infrastructure of deployed Jetsons at scale, specifically in array server type applications. So we have some pretty interesting applications to show you that uh, might be of interest if you're using Jetson today, or if you're new to Jetson, uh, we have some things to show you there as well. Okay, so for today's setup, we're gonna look at why deep learning and AI at the edge is important. We're going to introduce NVIDIA's edge platforms and Jetson ecosystem. We're going to take a look at real world success stories and specifically we're going to highlight a bunch of these Jetson node based array approaches and then we're going to do a technical deep dive on these and pull back the covers and, and look a little deeper there. Okay, so why edge is important over cloud based computing. So in a lot of cases, it might be the cost of your infrastructure latency may play a big role, you know, you simply maybe cannot have any of these algorithms going back and having any network latency uh, in the mix. These decisions need to be made, you know, exactly on premise to keep the latency to a minimum. And reliability is a big factor. Um, again, if there's network infrastructure issues, you know, we can't have unreliable networks play an issue there. And privacy ends up being you know, a very big concern here where um, if you have any sensitive data that needs to be processed, um, in any of these edge applications, you know, a lot of times you don't want this, um, you know, broadcast over any public networks um, going anywhere else. The decisions need to be made, you know, directly on premise. So some obvious challenges with running intelligent AI at the edge is these tend to be very computationally intensive, you know, pretty big workloads that need to happen and they can take up a lot of memory resources. So when building a system that can run multiple diverse and complex neural networks in parallel, you know, these networks need to be updated regularly on new data sets and new models. So it's critical that the system can not only support today's models, but also models over the future of the lifetime of the product. Okay, we're gonna look at three different approaches to edge platforms here for computing uh, when we're dealing with hardware. So on the left-hand side, you can see the NVIDIA GGX systems. These are really the biggest and baddest um, systems from NVIDIA um, to handle some of the most complex AI challenges out there. These are you know, easily going to have the highest performance, um, highest core count available, um, leverages NV switches uh, internally. And, and of course, these will come at um, you know, a fairly high price point and, and power consumption. Whereas if we're looking at um, the Tensor Core set of GPUs, so that's when we're really looking at sort of the next level of acceleration. So looking at the NVIDIA T4 and servers based on that, um, these really accelerate um, diverse workloads, including high performance computing and different deep learning um, inferencing applications. And then on the, um, lighter end of things and the most embedded is the NVIDIA Jetson platform. And the Jetson platform allows an integrated CPU and GPU all within the same uh, SOC uh, in packaged in a very small form factor, um, but still has the capability um, to leverage some, some very high end computational performance. So when talking about Jetson in these server-based approaches for edge computing, we want to take a look at some very interesting uh, inference server examples and this node-based approach to leveraging the Jetson. So as you can see uh, below that there's two examples here, one using the NVIDIA AGX Xavier module and another using the NVIDIA Jetson TX2 module. And within a 1U rack, you can see that um, there is up to 12 AGX Xavier modules uh, inside an inferencing server or 24 TX2 modules. And these systems can not only be used for inferencing, but also for learning applications. So when looking at those three major approaches, 
you can see when we're comparing performance and cost, there are some pretty big differences at some you know pretty high orders of magnitudes, uh, deltas between these systems. So you can see when we're comparing uh, performance to price, you can see that TX2 inferencing server that I was alluding to earlier um, is right around there. These are all measured by teraflops and, and US dollars, whereas a server based on T4 would sort of fall right under that. And then above that, you can see where this AGX Savior inferencing server would come in. And then, you know, really when we're getting into the, the high teraflop performance, um, you know, this is north of 150,000 US dollars is where sort of the DGX1 and then beyond that, the DGX2 would come in. Okay, so let's, let's compare a few different hardware approaches to um, do some of this deep learning and inferencing in a server-based application. So if we're looking at a TX2-based inferencing server, this hosts up to 24 NVIDIA Jetson TX2 nodes. Um, so these are all true um, NVIDIA Jetson TX2 modules. They all have their own CPU and GPU. Um, this server can do up to 31 teraflops performance with over 6,000 cores coming in at under 300 watts. Uh, and again, that's all within a one U rack server. Uh, one work Comparing a server based on Tesla T4s, you can see this still does require an outside management of a CPU. So this takes in uh, two Xeon Platinum processors and up to four Tesla T4s. And this would come in at around uh, 32.4 teraflops operations with over 10,000 CUDA cores. Um, but again, this is, this, is a, this is around a 2000 watt system, um, largely um, from those CPUs. Now, when looking at an AGX Xavier-based inferencing server, this can host up to 12 Xavier-based modules, uh, which all come with their own CPU and GPU integrated within the SOC module. So these all have their own 8-core ARM processor, and this is capable of a performance of 132 teraflops, over 6,000 cores, um, but at the performance per watt, as you can see, is, is very high here, as this is coming in uh, under 400 watts of power consumption. Then when we're looking at sort of the, the big bad end of things, um, where this DGX1 server comes in, um, you know, obviously much more uh, versed in training applications. Um, this houses up to eight NVIDIA Tesla V100s um, with dual core, dual 20 core Intel Xeon E5s. Um, this can do over a petaflop of performance, over 40,000 cores. Um, but again, this is, this is around 3,500 watts of power. So, so this is a much bigger server. So when looking at the size comparison of these three different hardware approaches to inferencing servers, you can see that the DGX and the T4 based servers are definitely some of you know, the longest for looking at the depth, where in the height, you'll see that the inferencing based servers for the Jetson applications as well as the T4 are the only ones that will be able to come you know, down to a one U solution. Okay, so let's compare some of the tech specs of these Jetson based inferencing servers. So, on the TX2 side of things, this is using uh, NVIDIA Jetson TX2 based on the Pascal GPU. You can see this actually houses up to 24 NVIDIA Jetson TX2 modules. It has an integrated uh, 10 gigabit embedded module switch, as well as a out-of-band management module, which has direct uh, out of band management for all of the NVIDIA Jetson modules. So this can talk to the console device of every module. It can um, toggle the power sequencing of each one. It can do the flashing. And then on the AGX version, this was very similar approach, uses the same 10 gig switch, but this one can actually house up to 12 modules. Hello everybody. My name is Ryan Collis. I'm the CEO of Uses Integrated Solutions. I'd like to begin today by sharing some real implementation stories of how the Array platform has been used to rapidly deploy trained neural nets at the edge. And then I'd like to also share how the platform is being used to shape the next wave of computer science graduates looking to push data science to new levels.
Since the release of the first array server, we've seen a very broad range of use cases where Jetson and AGX arrays have been applied. But not every deployment requires the scale of 24TX2 or 12 AGX modules. Although the 1U array servers can be configured from 4 to 24 modules, the rack mount form factor just isn't appropriate for every use case. In the next few slides, I'll be highlighting some of the current rack mount array deployments, and Patrick will detail a few applications where smaller custom arrays have been used in some pretty unique situations. So there's a couple of different array server use cases that fit into the in-class resource sharing category. They all come from customers in post-secondary schools and differ based on what they're actually doing with the systems. But what they all have in common is they need to teach the skills to the students they need in real life on the architecture that they'll use when they move into the workforce. The first use case involves using the system in a one-to-one -one setup or one student to one module. The students are each assigned a module at the beginning of the semester. This module serves as their dedicated server slash GPU platform, and they use it to complete the curriculum throughout the course. What makes this use case interesting is the reusable approach. In this approach, the lab environment is contained within a GPU-aware container running on the assigned module. The students are provided a Jupyter notebook on their respective nodes, which gives them access to the web interface to complete their work in a handful of different languages. This setup allows the modules to be reset at the end of the semester and reconfigured for a new student. This is a great example of how the Jetson modules can be used to teach the next wave of data scientists in a very consistent and reusable environment. All of the required user management in this situation was put into place using the systems the school already had. So each of the array servers provided a drop-in replacement for what would usually require 24 individual workstations. The second use case involves teaching a distributed computing class. In this case, the modules are used as a pool accessible by all the students. Essentially, what it comes down to is to teach a class on distributed computing what you need is a bunch of nodes, not necessarily a bunch of really big nodes. The array server provides a rack level experience in a matter of a few U, and it facilitates not just the teaching of the skills required to write the code for distributed jobs, but also how to schedule and distribute those jobs. And they do this in a fraction of the cost and footprint that it would typically take to teach this kind of class. This approach also has the benefit of allowing the students to test their workloads before running them on much larger compute clusters, which often give priority to research before students. Next, we're going to be talking about a military and defense application, moving away from strictly you know, traditional rack mount uh, enterprise type solutions. In this specific example of ship and air warfare integration, you could imagine these naval vessels that are being used in conjunction with a number of UAVs that are capturing full motion video. So almost all UAVs and naval applications today are capturing uh, full motion video and send it back to a main vessel. In many cases, this video data is extended either by combining signal or other sensor data or by combining video intelligence uh, with existing warfighter platform. So there tends to be a big challenge in sharing large quantities of this video data across the carrier strike groups using limited bandwidth. This data that comes back needs to be disseminated and oftentimes run through declassifying algorithms. And this all needs to be done with very low latency such that the video can be then distributed amongst uh, individuals that need to see this data in real time. So the traditional approach to this, you know, computing paradigm would have been, you know, to take traditional x86 servers and they'd have to essentially load up, um, you know, the big data center within the vessel um, with multiple CPUs and external GPUs uh, to do all this processing. And these groups take a, took a really good look at Jetson and what it had to offer and the advantages that it could do this real-time edge processing. So the approach to go with Jetson, the way that this was done was to actually take as many Jetson modules as they needed to process and disseminate these video streams. So in this case, they found putting this in a very small form factor, so this was meant to be a half rack, half width rack uh, compute system, housing four Jetson modules along with an out of band management CPU. Um, could be packaged in this half rack enclosure 
and then two to three video streams could be sent to each Jetson module, which would then all pass through a managed gigabit ethernet switch. So one of the very exciting things about going with Jetson is that they're able to miniaturize this solution into a SOCOM friendly footprint, which was one fifth of the size and one quarter of the weight than its predecessor. And they're able to deploy this in under six months um, with proven off the shelf hardware uh, using Jetson technology. Just about every building you walk into today has a series of IP cameras installed in many locations around the facility. These are generally what we would call dumb cameras. They're there simply to pass video back to a control room where the video is recorded and forgotten about. But these recordings possess real usable data that can be used to pull meaningful insights. These video feeds can be used in security to not only help monitor but identify behaviors that may lead to unwanted situations. And venues like museums could make use of their existing video feeds to enforce social distancing. But in order to do this, they are often under the impression that it's necessary to replace their existing cameras with a full installation of smart cameras. The array server platform is used as a means to leverage a commercial site's existing IP cameras and turn them into a very capable system of smart cameras. Specifically, they're currently being used in a retail location to allow this conversion within a large site where rewiring or acquisition of new smart cameras would be an enormous undertaking. With a single wire closet install and using a portion of the existing cameras, the array server was able to transform this network into a productive security and occupancy tracking system. Management now knows how many customers are present in their stores and how many cars are in their parking lot at any one time. This data is used to plot things like average daily occupancy and footfall and help determine things like how many employees are required on a certain shift of a specific day of the week. This may seem like a simple thing, but it's resulted in real savings. Although the Array Server platform is perfect for easily transforming a location's existing IP cameras into a robust network of smart cameras, it can also be used to supplement that installation with new capabilities. By adding devices like thermal cameras and 3D sensors to their existing network, commercial sites can obtain a much deeper insight into not only customers themselves, but how those customers experience and interact with the retail environment. By analyzing dwell and linger times, retailers can begin to understand the length of time a customer spends on a particular item or display and track the level of interaction with a given product. Tracking a customer's path through a store and combining this with further metrics, management can begin to understand the effects of a current store layout, allowing optimization of which goods are placed at high value real estate, like end caps and point of purchase displays. The array servers facilitate this with the ease of a back office install, while the smaller, less intrusive sensors are placed within the store itself. By augmenting this installation with small, low power wireless cameras and sensors, Stores can place and easily relocate devices to perform tasks like tracking inventory. With the heavier processing located in a central location on site, these smaller devices can often be powered by rechargeable batteries alone. In this use case, arrays provide a deployment of multiple sensors and camera types, performing identification, tracking, and estimation, all running within their own physical environment on a discrete system. And it does all this while converging the required networking and management into a small footprint and without the hassle of providing additional cooling or higher power delivery. In the context of a shopping mall, the array provides a very interesting deployment. In this use case, the arrays are again installed in a central location. The property management firm maintains ownership over the equipment while offering analytics as a service to smaller tenants. The modular nature of the system and features like built-in VLAN support allows the operator to carve up the distribution of the modules based on tenant requirements and provides physically separate hardware for each tenant. One or more of the assigned modules also provides a web interface to view and track the data collected from their storefront. This produces an end-to-end -end service operated entirely on site and provides smaller retailers with the benefits of retail analytics at rates they can financially manage. Both of these use cases are examples of how retail analytics gives brick and mortar valuable insight, but it also gives them something that's long been a benefit to online retailers only. It gives brick and mortar the ability to put real numbers to their customer engagement 
and it affords them the ability to craft the optimal user experience. In this military application example, this customer utilized a helicopter version of a wearable heads-up display which is powered by multiple Jetson compute platforms. Helicopter operators are able to enhance flight safety at night and under limited visibility conditions that can interfere with landing. These heads-up displays provide the air crew with an out-of-the-cockpit view displaying flight symbology for day and night operation in severe weather conditions. In limited visibility conditions, the pilot is able to fly by looking outside the aircraft rather than at avionics displays due to the wide field of view in the heads-up display. Traditionally, this had to be done by very power-hungry systems comprised of multiple x86 CPUs and GPU desktop cards. This was found to not be very robust and not have a very small footprint and form factor that could fit within the cockpit. The next generation solution used multiple Jetson modules packaged in a small form factor ruggedized enclosure, housing up to eight Jetson TX2 modules. This customized solution greatly reduced the overall swap budget of the previous system and allowed for robust and rugged operation. The system required various video input feeds from analog sources, SDI sources, as well as MIPI sources, all to feed directly into each Jetson module. And then a shared fabric between the module was interfaced from both PCI Express and Gigabit Ethernet switch topology. Another important constraint of these modular array designs is having the ability to remotely update and flash each of the Jetson modules. So the ability to do this in a programmatic way requires the out-of-band management module to actually toggle each of the reset and recovery lines from each Jetson module and then have a USB path to each of the OTG channels such that it can programmatically update each of the flash interfaces of each Jetson module in a programmatic fashion and there's no need to sort of you know take the modules out and cycle through the buttons on a dev kit. In this section I'll talk a little bit not just about the array servers but the TX2 and AGX modules themselves. I'll try and answer not just the question of why deploy an array server but also touch on a few of the reasons that deploying multiple Jetson or AGX modules makes sense. I'll briefly cover some of the challenges of deploying at the edge and give an overview of the functionality of the systems. Although this talk is focused on groups who deploy mainly in resource-constrained environments, the array server has been applied in many more use cases beyond these applications, and a large portion of what I'll discuss can be applied to these situations as well. As we all know, deploying any system at the edge comes with a different set of challenges when compared to data center installs. Some of the largest challenges are things like orchestration, power management, networking, access, and code migration. This results in questions like, how do we manage and track the device? How do we make sure that the tools that are required are present? And how do we debug when something goes wrong? How do we minimize the power required while providing the compute required for the task at hand? How do we implement the same level of networking performance and configurability that we're accustomed to? And how do we maintain the required access to not only individual devices, but also the required infrastructure, like network switches? And lastly, how do we ensure that what we train off-site will be capable of running on the hardware that fits all the above requirements? The NVIDIA Jetson and AGX modules and the software ecosystem around them do a remarkable job of providing a cost-effective and commercial-ready solution to address most of these challenges. They do this with an unmatched power-to-performance ratio, and the result of this is that we see a large portion of companies that deploy at or near the edge adopting what we call a Jetson-based strategy. This means they built their software around the Jetson products. Their workloads scale well in blocks of 256 or 512 GPU cores. They understand how to extract every last bit of performance per watt from the modules. 
they understand how many feeds or streams can be processed per module. And because of this, they have a solid understanding of the costs associated with bringing on a new customer. As a result, they can properly convey these costs to the customer in terms of return on investment and total cost of ownership. And the Jetson strategy becomes a predictable, reproducible part of their operations. This strategy of individual modules and carrier boards works for smaller install scenarios. However, when these deployments need to scale, the individual system scenario begins to become problematic. The image on the left of this slide shows an array customer's cluster. It's built using 14 discrete TX2 developer kits. Although the cable management is well done, what you can't see in the image is the 14 individual power bricks and network switches required to make it all work. In contrast, on the right hand is the UTX2, which not only reduced the overall footprint of the packaging of the cluster, but also provides an additional 10 TX2 modules. The array server proposition becomes even stronger when put in the context of video analytics. In locations like retail, AI-enabled cities, or perimeter security, these locations are often already fitted with suitable IP cameras. The array server allows these companies to deploy with all the same benefits as their usual Jetson strategy, but it enables the creation of a network of smart cameras with a single point of install, a network of smart cameras with storage, management, the required switching, and a typical power consumption of around 180 watts with all nodes in use, all by connecting two power cables and two network cables. Likewise, federal and industrial teams are increasingly looking to Jetson and AGX to address the same challenges as those with the Jetson-based strategy. However, these users are often looking for features which would traditionally be found in enterprise. Features like out-of-band management, built-in resiliency with redundant nodes and power delivery. These, of course, are features that are not typically available when deploying multiple discrete carrier boards. The TX2 and AGX array servers address these extra requirements by converging either 24 TX2 or 12 Xavier modules with things like out-of-band management, storage, a high-performance, low-power consumption, 10-gig capable network switch, and dual redundant power. All of this is consolidated into a 25-inch deep 1U rack mount chassis. The function and scalability of the array server platform can be detailed easily in block diagram. The systems consist of a single main board and three array carriers. Each carrier connects to the main board via an edge connector. Both TX2 and Xavier arrays share the same main board. However, the array carriers differ based on the selected module. The AGX carrier, pictured in the diagram, provides four modules per carrier for a total of 12 modules per system, whereas the TX2 carrier allows for eight modules per carrier, up to 24 modules per system. The carriers also provide the storage connectivity to the modules. As you can see in the diagram, the Xavier carrier will accommodate one NVMe drive per installed module. Storage on the TX2 array is handled by exposing a single SATA port which is directly connected to the last TX2 module of each carrier. This allows for one SSD to be installed per carrier card, or three SSDs in a fully populated system. Most customers will set up a network file system to make storage available to the remaining modules. The system management and network functions are provided by the main board. An ARM-based SMARC module provides the platform on which the out-of-band management, or OOBM, is handled. Internally, the OOBM connects to the UART of each individual TX2 or Xavier module, providing access to each module's console. Individual power and reset pins of the installed modules are connected to the OOBM with a GPIO expander, which can then be used to control and monitor the TX2 or Xavier's power state from software. The same method is used to connect the recovery pins on the Xavier modules. This allows the Xaviers to be placed into force recovery from software. Externally, the management module provides an RJ45 port to connect to an external management network from the system's front panel. An external USB port located on the front of the chassis provides a direct serial USB connection to the management console. 
This port also allows the system to operate in a physical access only configuration if desired. The Array's mainboard also contains the integrated XGG201 network switch. Internally, the switch provides up to 24 1 gigabit downstream connections to the Array carriers, either eight connections per TX2 carrier or four connections per AGX carrier. Externally, the switch provides two 10 gigabit and two 1 gigabit uplinks to facilitate connections to additional arrays or external switching. This is a fully managed switch and features all the layer two, layer three capabilities required for any deployment. It's capable of running in a pass-through mode where network topology is inherited from existing switching outside the chassis, or the switch can be configured to handle all the switching and routing for the internal fabric. The XGG201 supports VLANs, IPv4 and 6, uplink aggregation, and is capable of 80 gigabits per second of throughput. Basic device management poses one of the biggest challenges to deploying compute at or near the edge. Management of the array server platform is provided by a truly fully out of band management module. This module consists of a discrete Linux system running Ubuntu 18.04 as the host OS and is networked via an RJ45 gigabit ethernet connection located on the front of the chassis. The functionality provided by this module is very similar to that of IPMI management found in data center environments. The out-of-band management module is not connected to the internal fabric of the TX2 or Xavier modules, but instead provides a serial hardware connection to the consoles of all installed modules and the integrated network switch, allowing for remote configuration and management of the modules and network. The image in this slide demonstrates the command used to connect to the integrated network switch's management console. Connecting to a Jetson modules console is accomplished in exactly the same way. Users simply need to pass the device argument when running the built-in Minicom executable, providing the device which corresponds to the module they wish to connect to. The Jetson and AGX module serial devices are named in relation to their position in the system. For example, node zero is available via TTY USB zero device, whereas node 23 can be accessed from TTY USB 23. This feature provides the same functionality as an FTDI device connected to the UART of a dev kit, giving full console access from U-Boot to the Ubuntu user space. Deploying at the edge effectively requires full remote access to the hardware, where physical access to the system is often restricted or requires travel to the deployment site. Furthermore, when deploying at the edge, power consumption is always a concern. In a data center environment, available power can be determined based on the consumption requirements of the hardware. At the edge, it's often the available power that determines the hardware that can be deployed. The ability to manage the hardware at every level becomes imperative when deployment scenarios move further from the infrastructure and rely not only on limited power, but power which may be generated on site. The out of band management module helps address these concerns by providing full power control over the TX2 and Xavier modules via remote access. The control software is written in Python and can be integrated into standard orchestration tools, allowing the automation to power modules on when required and off when idle. This ability becomes particularly important when arrays are deployed in redundant configurations. The ability to physically power down backup resources in small increments can save valuable power resources over traditional methods. Methods which often involve the use of containers or virtualization as a means to provision many smaller resource blocks from systems running much larger GPUs and which consume much more power. The image in the slide demonstrates the most basic power control feature of the out-of-band management module. Users can turn all modules on from the command prompt by simply typing on.sh. Likewise, to turn all modules off, you would run the off.sh script. And module status can be obtained from the prompt at any point by running the status.sh script. If automation is further out in your team's roadmap, but you require more control than provided by the power on off scripts, the out-of-band management module provides a built-in web application for 
easy management of the array. The extensor GUI runs a small web server on the OOBM, which can be accessed remotely via web browser. Extensor provides not only individual power management of each individual TXT or Xavier module, but also provides a web-based console to access the console of each individual TX2 and configure the integrated network switch. The web-based console is identical to the management console accessed via the front panel or over SSH and contains all the same functionality. This becomes valuable when the array is located at a site where the system operator does not have full control over the entire network. In many of these cases, SSH is commonly blocked across the outward facing portion of the network. Extensor is based on Python and is easily customized to any user's requirements. The services are easily managed with systemd and it can be updated on site using standard deb packages. The GUI also contains user management and assignment, allowing administrators to create users for the system with varying degrees of restrictions. The settings tab allows administrators to do things like apply a unique node naming convention and track switching and IP addresses. This tab also serves to provide developers with all the required bus and data information required to apply power control within their own custom solution. A frequent question about the array servers relates to the operating system and the system software that runs in the modules themselves. The answer is something called L for T. L for T, or Linux for Tegra, is a collection of software created by NVIDIA specifically for the Jetson and AGX platforms. L for T contains all the required pieces from bootloader, root file system, Linux kernel, and device-specific drivers. And it's based on Ubuntu 18.04 and Linux kernel 4.9. The system provides a full-featured operating system with all the features you'd expect from a standard desktop or server install. Users familiar with running Linux on an x86 will find all the standard tools and libraries they're accustomed to. The array servers were intentionally designed to allow the modules to run l for t with as few modifications as possible. This allows users to develop their solutions on a TX2 or AGX Xaver developer kit and easily migrate that work to the array server platform without modification. The minor modifications we make should have no impact on the end user migration. In most cases, these changes were made to reduce the footprint of the operating system or to facilitate customer feature requests. Items we remove include wireless and Bluetooth support for the TX2. And because the modules operate in a headless mode or without a display, we do not include any of the desktop components. We do, however, keep minimal X11 support to allow for X11 forwarding and virtual displays. Items we add include landscape support. This is to allow the modules to be managed using Canonical's landscape, which is a large scale automation and management tool. We add full Kubernetes support. Although default l for t will support Kubernetes, there are some features that are not available without this customization. Cloud init and curtain packages are added to provide support for automation, including Canonical's Metal as a Service, which allows for the automated provisioning and deployment of the Jetson modules. The array servers also ship with all the SDK components provided by Jetpack pre-installed. This means that components like CUDA, QDNN, and TensorRT are all installed and ready to be used. When speaking with new customers about deploying software on the array servers, there's often concerns around migration and compatibility. This isn't just a question of migrating from Tesla or Titan to TX2 or AGX Xavier. Because the TX2 and the Xavier are based on ARM64 CPU architecture, there's often an apprehension shared by teams who develop on x86 and are faced with the task of migrating their code to TX2 or AGX. Their fears are that of compatibility, and they have an understandable desire for all the dependencies they require to just work. This apprehension is nothing new to us. Having developed systems based around ARM and ARM64 for over a decade, 
we've seen the architecture grow from an ecosystem which once made those concerns founded to a feature-rich, very compatible, legitimate architecture. Contributions from many Linux distribution and community members have provided the ability for ARM64 to now operate on par with x86. The vast majority of libraries and supporting software required is now available directly from repositories with a simple apt command. The question of migrating from Tesla or Titan to TX2 and Xavier has been answered by NVIDIA themselves. NVIDIA has done a fantastic job providing a foundation for teams to build, train, and deploy across their entire platform. This includes libraries, frameworks, and tools which just work from Tesla to Xavier, like CUDA, CUDNN, and DeepStream. When deploying models, TensorRT can take your trained models from many frameworks and automatically optimize them for deployment on anything from Tesla to Jetson. An SDK manager in Jetpack make installing these components a simple and automated process for not only Jetson, but the host x86 system as well. Using NVIDIA container runtime, GPU-aware containers provide consistent and easily reusable environments for running GPU-accelerated applications. And partnerships with cloud providers like Microsoft Azure and AWS have provided further integration and extend cloud-based features to the Jetson devices themselves, allowing users to not only deploy but update models and devices at will. These are all part of a very feature-rich, supportive, and active ecosystem that continue to allow AI initiatives to take full advantage of all the available products from Tesla to AGX Xavier. They ensure you can move from training to inference from data center to field without concerns of portability. And of course, these are all reasons why you might consider adopting the Jetson-based strategy and perhaps even do so at scale with a Jetson or AGX array server. So I hope we've been able to provide some insight and spark some intrigue around the ArrayServer platform. As I stated previously, the ArrayServer platform is used in many more scenarios beyond the few we covered today. We've seen adoption in places like HPC, the medical field, radio and signal processing, large-scale industrial and mining, and even cloud compute. If you have a use case you'd like to discuss with us or you have any questions, we'd be happy to speak with you about your application you can contact us at sales at connecttech.com. With that, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today, and we encourage you to enjoy everything else that GTC has to offer.